Hey guys, Coach Travis here and wanted to go over our weekly breakdown for this week's programming. So I know there were a few athletes that missed last week, uh, the first week of this cycle. Keep in mind, this is a progressive cycle that's going to be growing over time. So we want to make sure we minimize uh, missing any of the pieces so that we don't get overloaded in upcoming weeks. Um, this cycle is one of the ones that you guys requested most. It's a uh, rig movements, toes to bar, and then we've added some GHDs and some odd object or heavy object holds. Very, very, very good stimulus pairing really well with what we're working on and with the competitions coming up here soon, soon jerk palooza and duality. This cycle will help tremendously to get those skills honed in or for some of you get them, getting them for the first time. So going into day one, building off of last week, uh, one small addition this week is we uh, added two rounds of 10 kip swings on the rig prior to doing our rig movement. So remember with the kip swing, we want to focus on keeping the weight in this side of our hand. So whenever you grab the bar, we want a full grip with those knuckles almost feeling like they're pointing over the rig. Those are pointing eventually or essentially pointing straight up. It's going to feel like you're over the top of the rig and you want to feel like you're bending the bar like this as you pull down. That keeps the load on this side of your hand versus this side and it gets those rotator cuff muscles engaged to help with the, the strength for the pull. So we want to do 10 kip swing, keeping the arms locked out and feeling tension through your lats as you go through these movements. So we want our body long, straight, legs completely straight and together, toes pointed. We want to really feel the open through the shoulders and then a push back through the lats. If you have trouble finding this feeling, grab Coach Javi or myself or any of the coaches actually and they can help guide you through feeling that. It's very, very important that you feel that when doing this movement. So we're gonna do two rounds of 10 kip swings and then once we get done with those, we're going to go into a 10 minute EMOM of six toes to bar. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't have toes to bar yet, that's perfectly fine. The progression this week is we're going to take the movement that we are capable of, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are capable of, and we're going to do one rep of the next progression, followed by five reps of your current progression. So example would be if you have hanging knee raises, and you're working on that getting uh, the straight leg raise, we're gonna do one straight leg raise attempt and then five hanging knee raises. And then again, if you have straight leg raises and you're working toes to bar, that first rep, you're gonna really pull to get the toes either to the bar or as close as possible, and then follow that by five reps of the straight leg raise. So we're working on starting a rep towards our next goal, or if you have toes to bar, we're going to do six toes to bar. Once we get done with that, we're going to do one max effort hang again here. The goal is to get that nice full grip, no fault grip with the thumbs wrapping around. We're going to hold the bar, keeping the core tight, engaged. It's not a dead hang. It's engaged. Core is tight. Legs are straight, toes pointed and legs together, holding for as long as you can before your grip gives out. It does not matter how long that is. It's as long as you can hold. Going into day two, we're gonna be doing three rounds of max effort handstand hold against the wall, straight into um, a one minute sandbag or sand ball hold in a bear hug position. Now the goal here again is to get the ball or the bag, squeeze it tight and focus on maintaining the ability to breathe. That's one of the hardest things when you're holding an object in front is it tends to press against the diaphragm, it starts to take away your ability to take in air and that can create fatigue very quickly. So the goal here is to get the ball. We're standing straight with our core braced, holding the ball and trying to focus on steady breathing. So it's going to be three rounds of the max effort handstand hold into a sand ball or sandbag hold. Give yourself about a minute to 90 seconds between each set of rest. Going into day three, we're going to be doing a um, nine minute EMOM of six to eight GHD sit-ups. Now this past week, Coach Javi and the other coaches went over the, um, the progressions for GHDs. A lot of athletes are working to parallel. If you are still working on your GHD journey and parallel is where you feel most comfortable, that's perfectly fine. Let's stick with that parallel, maybe slightly lower. If you do have full GHDs, we're gonna be reaching down, touching the floor, 
coming back up. And again, with these, your workload should be done at the 30 second mark so that you give yourself 30 seconds of rest. Um, there's a video included on the programming to watch technique there. Biggest thing that was that I noticed with some of the classes that were working on these was getting that leg to extend to initiate the drive back up. So make sure we're getting that knee to lock back out before we come up. I was talking with one of the athletes, think about these are your knees, this is your torso. So as you go down, we want to engage here to begin that up. So as you come down, knees extend and that catapults your torso back up towards the top. So nine minute EMOM, six to eight GHDs um, there and make sure that if you are unable to go all the way, we're stopping at parallel, maybe slightly below. And then getting into day four, we have three to four sets of banded pull-ups. And I had some athletes that asked questions about these. The goal for this is for it to be relatively easy as far as each rep. The goal is also to build volume here. So it's to condition your arms and your lats for pull-ups. And one of the reasons why we want to focus on that is a lot of times people in their mind will think, okay, I want to get my first pull-up. Beautiful. And then they're thinking, okay, my next goal is I want to get my two pull-ups and then three pull-ups. Now, while that's not necessarily a bad train of thought, if you think about how pull-ups are typically done in a workout, we're not doing singles, we're not doing doubles, we're not doing triples. We're looking at sets of like eight to 15, sometimes 20, 25. We have high volume sets that we're breaking up as we need to for workouts. And the goal is to get bigger sets. So the mindset we wanna have isn't just, I wanna get one, then I wanna get two, then I wanna get three, then I wanna get four. Those things will come but our mindset should be, I wanna get my first one, and then the next goal should be, I wanna be able to do five, and then I wanna be able to do 10. Then I wanna be able to do sets of, multiple sets of five, 10, 15, et cetera. So in order to get our mind wrapped around those bigger sets and to get our body conditioned to that volume, we want to introduce that volume and condition the lats just to being able to work for that long. So we wanna perform these with as much resistance as we need to be able to hang on to the bar and work through that set with as few breaks as possible. And the biggest goal is decreasing the amount of support that we need. We've been doing sets of 15, we'll eventually work up to sets of 20. So we want to make sure that we're getting this volume in, conditioning your lats and your arms to that stimulus so that it's not foreign when we start adding more volume. So this is our breakdown for the week. If you have questions or concerns about anything, feel free to reach out to myself, Coach Javi, or any of the coaches in the gym, and we'll be happy to answer those questions. Excited to see you guys this week. Let's get ready to work hard.